Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And as you can see from the title of the video, we're going to be starting off on Mars and we're going to fly back to Earth. And I plan on doing this mission in uh, using IMFD because I'm trying to gain more familiarity with that versus Transex. Back when I did all my old videos, I did almost everything in Transex. And right at the end, when I took that long break away from Orbiter, I was only just beginning to kind of transition over to IMFD. So I would like to become more familiar with IMFD, so that's the, uh, the tool that I'll plan on using for this flight. So let's just go ahead and switch camera views here and jump into it. So there's nothing special about this scenario. I just uh, picked pretty much a random scenario and used the scenario editor to put the XR2 Ravenstar at the Olympus space on landing pad 1 on Mars. And then we're using today's date. The date that I'm recording this video is Thursday, October 20th, 2022. Now, obviously, it's very unlikely that we'll actually be able to fly the mission on today's date, but I always like to use today's date as the starting point. All right, so there's quite a bit to do here, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, let me just bring up IMFD on this side. And we're going to go into the menu, and we're going to go into, I have to think about this, uh, course and target intercept and we have uh, I believe we have to let me think about this as well do we have to reference the Sun I want to say and then we have to target the earth I think I'm doing that right yeah okay so then we're going to use IMFD to try to find an escape vector that will give us a reasonable um, OV and IV and I'll probably be mostly looking at the OV um, as I'm taking into consideration how much Delta V we're going to be using um, I am not I will say I'm not going for absolute perfection in this flight so I'm not going to bust out the spreadsheets and do all the I'll do all the calculations and minimize locks and all that um, and try to take the exact amount of fuel. I'm pretty much going to fill up the main tank and bring one LOX module with me because I know that's enough and then we'll undoubtedly have quite a bit of fuel left over, quite a bit of LOX left over. But the goal here is mostly just to use IMFD and get more familiar with it, not so much get that uh, absolute perfect, um, you know, perfect Delta V, perfect LOX, all that stuff. All right, so let's see, for starters, I'm going to lock the uh, time of flight and I'm going to come up here to MJD and I'm just gonna run the date forward until we find something that's uh, you know more, looks a lot better than what we have now because I, I can tell just by looking at these numbers that this is garbage. So let's start with a, uh, probably have to go with the 100 adjustment because we're probably gonna have to adjust by, you know, weeks, months, perhaps even years. So let's just start going forward. And and you can also tell just kind of by the shape of the hypothetical orbit whether or not we're going to have a good plan. And you can see this is pretty much a straight line, so this is complete trash. So we need to keep going forward. And as we go forward, you know, we're getting more of that circular Hamann type of transfer in our OV and our IV will start coming down. And let's see, so we're getting into something that's looking a bit better now. 4,000, 3,800. So let me... Mm. So let me go around again. Let me find a, another date out in the future. So that comes around again. And ten nine eight seven six five four three twenty nine. This is looking good. Okay, so I saw it bottom out there around two point eight, and again I'm primarily looking at the OV, not necessarily looking at the total cost at this point. So two point eight, and now let me do an adjustment down to ten. So that's going up on the OV. So two point eight six. Five is what I'm seeing is the lowest. Then I'll do one more adjustment down to one. And now I'll just try to find uh, the lowest overall total cost based on this OV. 
So the OV is going up a little bit now, I realize, but now it's only going up by, you know, a few meters. It's not going up by hundreds or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and find uh, kind of the lowest total here. Just click and hold for a moment. Um, that's actually starting to drive the OV up a lot. So let me actually go ahead and just keep that lowest OV, which we saw back here around 2.65, I think it was. Yeah, somewhere around in there. All right, so, so let's go with something like that for now. All right, now, let's see. Let me go ahead then and unlock, and now I can use the TEJ and TIN uh, individually without, now I can adjust the TIM without having any impact on the TEJ and vice versa. So now I'm going to come back to the TIN here. We'll go to a 100 adjustment for now. And that's bringing everything down. The OV is coming down a little bit. The IV is coming down a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, just see what kind, of, what kind of values we can get at a minimum here. So we got 2.8. And then the IV is also still coming down. So both values coming down, although the OV started going back up. So let's find the lowest OV, which I think was around 8.11 or 8.10, something like that. 8.09, okay, so 8.09. All right, now I'm gonna come over here to the TEJ. This is the ejection time. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna do some adjustments over here to try to find the low spot. Okay, so it's going to be, we're going to be somewhere in this neighborhood. Uh, so somewhere around this date is going to be our eject date. And I know that when I use the scenario editor to move time forward, um, it's going to change. It's going to have at least some impact on our OV and our IV. So before I worry about dialing this in to its absolute lowest point, I'm just going to use the scenario editor to come forward to maybe... Uh, maybe like a week before this date, and then we'll play with it a little bit more before we actually move the time all the way forward to 24 hours before the launch. Now, what I could do also, since I do have this um, as a reference, you know, I could write these numbers down, and then I could also come over here and lock the time of flight, and then do a, a, another large adjustment, um, like to maybe find the next launch period, which would be, you know, a year and a half or two years from now. But in this, for this particular flight, I'm not going to fuss over trying to find the absolute perfect launch window. I'm just going to take the next launch window that looks reasonable, and this looks reasonable to me. So, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to lock this and run the clock forward. But I will bring up the scenario editor and go to the date. And I'm going to, like I said, put in uh, this date here minus like a week or something. So 61271. Um, let's just go seven one. That'll be good enough. So six one two seven one, and we'll apply that, and we're done and closed. Now that we're much closer to the launch window, let's play around with these variables a little bit more, just to see what we can find, um, if we can just do a little bit better than what we have here. So let's start with the uh, the arrival time. So that's going. So that's bringing the IV down, but it's taking the OV up. So I'm going to go the other direction on that. I'm going to focus on having a lower uh, launch cost, uh, ejection cost. Okay, so 7.2 looks is about what I saw there. And let's just go ahead and check the TEJ as well. I got to be a bit mindful of this because we are at a 100 adjustment. So that's going up. Let's go backwards. Let's keep going backwards. I just want to make sure I don't go so far back that I lose my launch window completely and then I have to use the scenario editor to essentially rewind time. <clears throat> so, yeah, we may actually want to back up the clock a little bit more, but I think what I'll do actually... Okay, so we're, we're, we're only... We're messing with like a meter or two per second, so I'm not gonna, 
I'm not going to fuss with it beyond this point. So we have the TEJ now is the better part of one day out into the future. So we're going to we're going to take this flight. We're going to fly this without, you know, worrying about getting every last little meter per second squeezed out of the uh, of the solution. So I'm going to bring interplanetary up on this side and I'm going to go to the menu and I'm going to share the left side with the right side. So in other words, the right side will be getting its data from the left side. And in order to do that, I need to put in the ID for the left side, which is zero. And then I'm going to go into surface launch, I think. Let me think for a second. Yeah, surface launch. And I need to reference uh, Mars, which is already referenced. And actually, I don't need to target anything here. So I'm going to change the course program. No, I want it on course program. Yeah. And then I'm going to go to the, the target altitude for me on Mars is going to be about 200 kilometers. So let's put in 200K. And so what this is telling me is that, let me think about this for a second. We, our best heading that we can have is going to be uh, 66.35 degrees, and that's going to be in 4,400 seconds. However, the time to eject is in 60, almost 68,000 seconds. So we're going to pass this. We're going to let this time go by, and we're going to see what we get for the next window. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me just go ahead and warp time forward, getting closer to the TEJ. But again, we're going to pass this time. And so now we have the next opportunity, the next best heading we can get is 113.6 degrees. And that's going to be in 30,000 seconds. So let's go ahead and warp time forward, get closer to that point, And we'll see what we have when we get closer. We may even have to pass this time as well. Let's go a bit farther forward. So, so our option, one option we have is to launch here in about 7,000 seconds roughly at a heading of 113. The problem is if we do that, our, we're launching uh, quite a bit ahead of the TEJ. So one thing I might be able to do is let me see if I can make this TEJ align better with this time as long as it doesn't negatively impact my outward velocity, a lot, at least not in a major way. So let me do an adjustment down to 10, and I'm going to see if I can take some time off the TEJ just so I can get closer to this time here that, that the surface launch program is suggesting to us. Let me go to that 100. Yeah, so by taking some time away, we're, we're improving our OV a little bit. So I think, we, I think we'll be able to make these match up pretty well. So let's go ahead then and go, um, let's do an adjustment down to 10. Yeah, because we're not having any super negative impact on our velocities here. So let's go ahead and just make these match up. Uh, you know, as close as we can. It doesn't have to be exact, of course, because once we get into orbit, um, you know, we're going to pretty much change everything anyway. So. All right, so the TEP, the time to the ejection point, which I think is what that means, is uh, 6.3, so I want this number to be about the same. Okay, we'll go with that. All right, so Control-H to... Uh, hang on, let me see here. There we are, H to bring up the HUD, and we'll turn on the APU. Hover doors are already open. Um, actually, I did forget one thing. Let me just double check. But I think I already put an oxygen tank in here. But let me just double check. Yeah, so I have 420 days of locks and all the fuel is already filled up. That's something that, you know, obviously I would want, I would have wanted to do, um, you know, prior to committing to the launch. All right, so our numbers are uh, lining up here pretty well. So it's time to go. Um, let me just make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Radiator is uh, 
Let's stow it, although I think we can have it open for the ride to orbit, but we'll go ahead and stow it. Hover doors are already open, and yeah, we're ready to go. Um, let me turn off external cooling. Using onboard O2. All right, so now we're going to uh, hover up, and I'm going to immediately hit the horizon level. Wheels up, gear Bring in the up. landing gear, and we're going to rotate to heading uh, one, gear just after 118, locked. so about right there. Now I'm going to take out all the hover. Let me actually put in just a burst of hover really quick, just to get some altitude here, get some vertical speed. Okay, now I'm going to take out all the hover, press Control v turn this off, full power on the main and lock it. Now you just want to watch our EIN on our right to orbit, and we're going for a target altitude, a target apoapsis of about 200 kilometers get a little bit more pitch. I just don't want to pitch too aggressively because Mars, uh, you get to Lock orbit very on. fast. Not as fast as you do on the moon, but still very fast. So if we take a real aggressive pitch on Mars, we're going to end up with a, uh, you know, we'll end up with our, 1, at our target apoapsis much sooner than we would like. Mach 900. So Vertical speed's gone down a little bit, so we're currently descending just a little bit, but that's okay. You can see the velocity vector coming back up uh, above the uh, the level line there. All right, EIN's coming down. Don't like this, so I'm going to change the projection. So, yeah, the EIN's coming down, and our APA is currently not anything we have to worry about because it's going to a negative number. Information. APU running. Go ahead and turn off the APU. Don't need that on right now. Although I suppose I could use surface controls for this, but we'll go ahead and just use a little bit of translation here. I'm gonna go ahead and pitch up just a little bit more. Do want to? We do want to climb, get out of the relative thick Martian atmosphere. So again, this flight isn't going to be, uh, you know, the paragon of perfection by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I was playing with Lunar Flight six. recently and it kind of got me wanting to mess around with the orbiter again. And I guess I can also mention um, part of the reason I wanted to do this flight as well. Uh, I was, after recording Mach the seven. Moon to Earth flight, I think it was. I got a comment on that video or one of my other videos. I don't actually remember which one it was by I believe the handle was Space Boy and he was just saying that he was having a little bit of difficulty coming back from Mars to Earth because the arrival speed back at Earth was always so high that he was you know, burning up. So I was like, eh, you know, I, let me try that flight again. I haven't flown the Mars to Earth flight in like seven years, eight years. <laughs> it's been a long time. All right, so I can see my EIN is uh, slowly coming down. Mach 10. We're only at 16 kilometers altitude. I should have pitched up much more uh, there at the beginning, but again, I just didn't want to overdo it because you end up with your apoapsis at 200 long before you Mach reach orbital 11. velocity. Not that there's a huge problem with that, but it's just not ideal. All right, EIN still coming down. We're still climbing. We're apoapsis is currently about Mach 50 kilometers. 12. And we should be mostly out of the thick Martian air at this point. Still just a little bit left here till we Mach get, 13. you know, 50, 60 kilometers. Apoapsis is uh, creeping up, so let's go ahead and start pitching down now, just because you know we want to gain as much um, Mach 14. Want to gain as much horizontal speed as we can. EIN still coming down, so pretty much head mostly towards level flight at this point. EIN Mach coming 15. down. So I'm going to keep an eye on the apoapsis, and I'm probably going to kill it here pretty soon. 
uh, kill my main engine because I will probably continue to gain altitude. Just checking my altitude. Okay, sometimes uh, when you are still in the atmosphere and you kill your main engine, your your APA is uh, to continues to increase, which mine is just not very fast. So I'll go ahead and put in a little bit more velocity. And we'll go with that. So that gets us most of the way up to, uh, to our target apoapsis. And our EIN is uh, very low, so that's fairly good. All right, um, let's go ahead now. Let's just warp time forward. Let's get up a little bit higher, then we'll open the radiator. So we're above 100 kilometers. We should be fine at this altitude. So control A to turn on the APU. And I don't remember what the hotkey is for the radiator, if there even is one. So a little bit of time warp to get through that animation. Control A to turn that back off. F8 back over to the big view. And now we're about 700 seconds away from apoapsis. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that we're going to need to circularize our orbit rather than um, bringing up orbit eject and trying to make that determination. Uh, let's actually just go ahead and take a quick look, though. So if I bring up interplanetary and let me think about this for a second. Let me come over to here, orbit eject, and I'll connect orbit eject to our... Um, what do I'm trying to connect this to course program and it looks like yeah it looks like we will so our, our ejection point is over here and the high point of our orbit is up here so uh, we need to circularize our orbit before we will have the opportunity to eject so let's go ahead and go over to the orbital program and we'll go ahead and take care of the circularization of apoapsis and then we'll end this part of the video since I see we're just coming up on, uh, we're over 20 minutes at this point. So let me bring up orbit on this side. So our apoapsis in 640 seconds, it's going to be about a 19 second burn roughly. So we're going to want to begin that burn when we are about uh, eight seconds out. So let's go ahead and warp time four, get a bit closer to the time to the apoapsis. And we're about 50 seconds out. Let's come back to real time. We'll put the ship in prograde position. That'll make it the uh, interplanetary. will have a little bit less work to do. So let me just come down to 0 0.1 for a second. So the burn time is now 13 seconds. Half of that's about 6.5. So when we're about 6.5, we'll do the auto burn. And here comes the burn. And that's going to complete our circularization, which is good because that means we will stay in orbit, which is always a good thing. The first thing you want to do when you achieve orbit is make sure you stay in orbit. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for uh, this video. Let me go ahead and press Control P to pause. And when we come back in the next part, we will continue this journey. Uh, we'll continue setting up IMFD so that we can complete our flight from Mars back to Earth. I will see you in the next part.